manually it is. No app scan, oh damn. No HP web inspect, oh damn. If you could test a web app by hand, yes it is, isn't it? So you're starting to see the point that I was making earlier? If you could do these things by hand, network pen test by hand, web app pen test by hand, when you move into the new technology, your ability to audit this stuff is gonna be there. If you can't do those basics, you're not gonna be able to jump into this game, okay? Next thing, you can actually install Burp Suite on both your iPhone and your Droid. Who's like, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, people, come on. Everybody, can I get an amen? amen. That's what I'm talking about. I got Burp Suite on my phone. What? It is on like Donkey Kong up in here. Okay? All right. Next thing I really needed to understand is sometimes it's not just the app communicating with some poor little web service. Sometimes your app might be communicating with a huge web service. Load balancers, cloud computing, and all that kind of stuff. I flew over to Norway about a month and a half ago and got my wig pushed back. Because, you know, I was over there like, well, you know, I'm the IT security consultant and I do all this application stuff and I do all this mobile stuff. So, you know, you know my head is... You know, I'm having trouble getting through the door. You know? Anybody, anybody pulled that card? So now I'm having trouble getting through the door and I get over to Norway and all of a sudden I realize, oh, they are kicking our butts with mobile. These guys have mobile-based PKI where the banks are giving PKI, you know, all this, the, the, the smart card and all that for the phone and they're doing SMS-based banking. Are we there? I went over there thinking I was going to do a security assessment and got myself a class. I was like, oh, you know, I'm, let me just shut up and sit down. <laughs> I was kind of like, wow, okay, yeah, we're not doing that over here. And they're all looking at me like, you're not doing this in America? I was like, no, no, let me just, let me, let me, let me go eat some schnitzel and just shut up. How about that? Yeah? So start to look at what's going on and don't just look in America. You really will be surprised at how complex some mobile architectures are, especially with, like I said, this SMS banking, XML gateways and transport mechanisms. There's some really complex architectures out there. All right, standards. Who's with me? Standards. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, mobile? Uh -uh. No standards, homie. It is the wild, wild west out there. So now here's something that's really kind of bothering me. I'll get a client who will call me, and I'll be like, well, Joe, can you tell us about your mobile experience? And I'll be like, yeah, I've pen tested about 15 mobile apps in the last year. Do I have anything else to say? No. Did I go to college for it? No. If someone asks you, well, what standards do you follow when you audit it? What do I say? Hey, dude, you know, drink some rum and coke and, you know, install Burp Suite. <laughs> yeah? So I had to come up with some generic things that I tested. And I had to say, okay, I started looking at the web application security uh, threat classification documents from webappsec.org, and I liked how they break it down in terms of authentication, authorization, input validation, error handling, data security, and logging. And I really just try to keep it generic. So I really just try to test each individual component. Okay, you know, how's it doing with temporary storage? Is it doing logging? And then after that, when the developers start to ask you questions, you want to make sure that you apply the same sound fundamentals. So let's say, for example, one of the things that I'm dealing with with one of my clients is now that he's doing development for the iPhone 4, he's like, the iPhone 4 has a hibernate function. So let's say I'm playing a game, and all of a sudden the phone rings. Well, I'm playing the game, <laughs> now the mistress calls, and I'm, damn. Woman, I was playing Angry Birds. <sighs> now the phone hibernates, so the app hibernates, and I gotta take the call. So now I gotta take the call, and you know how that is. Stressful. Now the app is over there chilling, it's in hibernate mode, and it's receiving these sleep events, saying, hey dude, keep sleeping. Dude, keep sleeping. Dude, he's off the phone. Wake up. So you get these triggered events, basically. 
So now the developers will often ask, how do I handle these triggered events? Should I prompt for a username and password to reinitialize the game? Should I prompt for a passcode? Um, where do I store uh, credentials for the app? Is it okay to store it in the keychain? Do I store it on the file system? Do I use some sort of custom encryption? Are there some libraries out there for me? All these kinds of things, right? So, guys, if you were testing a web app and you get up, <whistles> walk to the fridge to get yourself a sandwich. Now, if you get a phone call and it takes you 45 minutes to come back, should the app have logged you out? Seriously. Why would a mobile phone be any different? Seriously, take the same rules of good housekeeping and secure coding that you apply in the web space, and when you start dealing with the mobile app, why would it be any different? Is session management important in the normal web space? Yes, why would it be any different in mobile? Does that kind of make sense? So try to use those same kind of guidelines that you would use in testing any other app to testing the mobile app. All right, so remember I said there's no standards yet? Well, a couple of people are trying a couple of things. So the first thing is uh, Veracode. Veracode is a company in North Carolina that does um, dynamic testing of, of uh, compiled code. So they don't source code audit, they basically fuzz test. Uh, compiled code, and then they'll test third-party libraries for you. So that's some really cool technology down there. One of the guys there, um, his name is Tyler Shields, does a ton of mobile stuff. Tyler was a real big help for me when I was starting to get into the mobile space. So really, really smart guy, really showed me a lot. So Veracode does a lot. They released the Veracode Top 10. It's kind of like the OWASP Top 10. So what that does is they gave you the top 10 vulnerabilities and attack tactics that hackers were using in the mobile space. Then Jack Menino and OWASP is trying to put together the OWASP top 10. Now what Barricode has decided to do was give their top 10 to OWASP. Okay, so you're gonna see in the coming year some more standards that are coming out. You're also gonna see at DEF CON, I'll be doing this talk, a variant of this talk, and I'll be releasing a mobile tool for learning. Have any of you guys played WebGoat? Okay, where you go through all the cross-site scripting, SQL injection tutorials. I'm actually gonna be releasing a mobile platform of that, where it'll be Android and it'll be iPhone and it'll have a series of challenges to take you through learning how to do mobile web app testing, just like WebGoat. So that's gonna be the thing that I'm releasing later in the summer. So here's some places where you can get some links from references. If you guys want my slides, just come up, grab my card, I'll email you my slides. I'm pretty sure uh, EC Council will be taking our slides from us, so I'm sure they'll be available on the Takedown Con website as well. And if you need to holler at me, feel free. That's my five minutes. Uh, do we have any questions? Go ahead. It'll be on my website, Strategic Sec. So his question was, that mobile app that I'm releasing, will there be a website that you can download that? Yeah, and it's gonna be my website, strategicsec.com. Any other questions? Do I have? Uh, probably will not. Um, so her question was, will I be putting my slides from here on the website? Probably not until after the summer for my next series of conferences. I gotta do DEF CON, BREW CON, and all those different conferences. Probably around September, October, I'll be putting it on SlideShare, and that's where I usually keep my slides from presentations at once I'm done uh, with the con circuit. Any other questions? Go ahead, sir. Behind you, yeah. Okay, so his question was for the app, Charles Proxy, can you intercept one port or can you intercept multiple ports? Uh, it actually can intercept multiple ports. However, most client mobile apps generally interact over port 80 and port 443. So I haven't had to use it to test anything other than that, but it is a web proxy only. Okay, that's it. Oh, go ahead. Cloud computing, do you just need some resources on it or? Of course, be happy to talk to you offline about cloud computing. More than happy to. 
Okay, anyone else? Yes, sir. Uh, Google. It, it's, it, I mean, man, it, it, two seconds later, you're like, good God, this was, it was scary easy. Oh, no, no, it's not mini Metasploit. So his question was, is there a tool for Android that's a mini Metasploit? And no, there's not. What you're actually doing is after you jailbreak your phone, you install an app called Cydia. And Cydia acts as the interface to allow you to download things like Metasploit and all of those other tools. Okay, so you use Cydia on uh, iPhone. Android and on iPhone. Oh, so what do you use on Android? On Android, there's a distribution you actually download. And it's a Gentoo based distribution right here. It just says Gentoo image. Okay, the Robotio image is what you download and that'll have all that stuff, okay? Looks like I'm gonna have to wrap it up, guys. We're out of time, okay? I really appreciate you putting up with me, guys. Thanks a lot.